Good morning everyone. Today, I am honored to share with you the rich tapestry of the Kalanguya indigenous systems and practices. As someone from Tino, I am deeply connected to these traditions and proud to share how our community sustains itself through intricate and time-honored practices. Let's begin by discussing the economic systems and activities in Tino. Our municipality's economy is predominantly agricultural, shaped by our unique topography and temperate climate. Despite the challenging terrain and limited accessibility, we have developed resilient agricultural practices that allows us to thrive. Our fields, carved into the steep mountainsides, are a testament to, to our ingenuity and hard work. We rely on a variety of crops, but rice farming remains central to our way of life. Our agricultural practices follow a traditional cycle that involves the entire community. This cycle is supported by specific tasks designated for men and women, with each step accompanied by rituals and communal efforts. These practices not only ensure the productivity of our fields, but also reinforce our cultural values and community bands. Let's explore the activities from October to December. First, we have the Hippawa Tan Hihu Don Alak that is done on October. During this time, the men take on the vital task of cleaning, clearing and repairing our irrigation systems. These systems are crucial for our fields ensuring that water reaches every terrace. This preparation is essential for the planting season ahead. Let's go to the number two. We have the Lamon Nihapnakan, which is done on November. In November, the women clean and prepare the rice paddies. This involves removing weeds and debris to create a sustainable environment for planting palai or the rice seeds. Third, we have Liak Tan Pehed Nihapnakan on late November. The men then fix the dikes and repair the stone walls that line our terraces. These structures, structures I mean, are critical for maintaining the integrity of our fields and preventing soil erosion next we have the hihapnak which is on december the women sow palai seeds during the full moon a practice rooted in the belief that the moon's faces influence influence plant growth this tradition is passed down through generations emphasizing the importance of timing our agricultural activities. Another one we have the pingil. This ritual involves offering a chicken to the gods of harvest. It is a way of seeking blessings for a plentiful supply of seedlings, ensuring a good start to the planting season. Lastly, we have the hilamon, which is December. Finally, the women clean the rice, the rice fields using the Ubu system or Bayanihan system, which is a form of mutual help. This practice fosters a sense of community and shared responsibility. Let's proceed to the activities done on December to January. We have the Hipiteo de Payeo. The men prepare the rice fields by fixing dikes and cultivating the soil. This step is crucial for creating a fertile environment for the seedlings. Another is the higbai. The women transplant the palai seedlings from the seed, belt, seed beds to the paddies. This meticulous process continues 
until all the fields are planted. After planting, we prepare rice wine for the upcoming rituals, celebrating the successful start of the planting season. On February to March activities, as we move into February and March, we continue to care for our fields. We have the Hibakla, the women check the irrigation systems ensuring that water flows properly to nourish the growing plants. Another is the Hikulpi, the men participate in the Hikulpi ritual offering wine and chickens to the gods to promote healthy plant growth. This ritual also includes communal fishing which strengthens our social bands and provides additional food sources. Third is the Hiuma, which is on late March. The men prepare kaingin or Sweden fields for planting sweet potatoes. These fields are used for two to three years before we transition for planting tiger grasses, which are essential for making brooms. This practice demonstrates our ability to adapt and sustainably use our land. During the period from March to June, we engage in various activities to support our livelihoods. We have the Tiegeo. The men take on additional income generating activities including barter trade. This period allows us to diversify our source of income during the dry season. We also have the Dam'ah or Dilatang. With the arrival of the first rains, we refrain from field work to show respect for the newly planted crops. This practice reflects our reverence for nature and its cycles. Another is the Hikagaukau Tanhilba. The women weed the rice fields using the Ubo system ensuring the crops remain healthy and free from competing plants. Another also is the Hiwaklip. We clear the surroundings of the field to prevent wild rats from entering and damaging the crops. And lastly, we have the Hiadug. This is to protect our rice plants from Maya birds. We build bion structures. These are believed to be the word of pets and destructive elements safeguarding our crops until harvest. In June and July, we prepare for and carry out the harvest. We have the Kaltod. This ritual aims to protect our palai from pets. By performing this ritual, we seek to ensure that our hard work is not undone by infestations. We have the Hiani. The harvest time is a communal effort with both men and women participating. We perform rituals that involve offering chickens and pigs to Kabunyan, the deity of harvest to thank and for to ensure the bountiful yield. Another is the Bunyaga Nipage. This pre-harvest ritual includes multiple chicken offerings to various gods and spirits. This serves to secure a good health uh, harvest and protect us from evil spirits and endures during the harvest. Now let's proceed to the post-harvest. Several rituals ensure the safety and sufficiency of our store, stored palai. We have the Toldag. This ritual is performed to prevent theft and destruction of our stored palai, safeguarding our food supply. Another is Who Can Nikitnim? Who Can Nikitnim? We offer a chicken to ensure our granary safety and sufficiency until the next harvest, maintaining our food security. We have in Apoy periodically performed this ritual aims to prolong the consumption of our palai, ensuring that our food supply lasts. 
Last is the Luwat Ono Lukya. Similar to other rituals, this one asks Rabunyan for the safety and protection of our rice granary, reflecting our continuous reverence for the divine. Finally, let's look at the activities from August to September. Adawe or the Adawe. This is done on August to September. During a short period, we prepare Kaingen for new planting. This involves clearing the land and readying it for the next crop cycle. Second, we have the Pekdel. In times of famine, we perform this community ritual offering a pig to Kabunyan to ask for a plentiful harvest of sweet potatoes and palai. This ritual underscores our reliance on divine intervention during challenging times. To conclude my discussion, the Kalangoya indigenous knowledge systems and practices are a testament to our deep connection with the land our culture and each other. These practices not only ensure our economic stability and food security but also fosters a strong sense of community and mutual support. By adhering to these time-honored traditions, we preserve our heritage and pass on valuable knowledge to future generations. Thank you for your attention and for allowing me to share the rich cultural heritage of Tinoc with you.